ever thought what it would be like to immerse yourself in a sound bath? Well, I've got you covered. Join me as I invite a special guest to dive into the unique experience of a sound bath and spill all the details on the After Bath podcast. Welcome to the After Bath, where we explore unique experiences and wellness practices. I'm your host, Matt. Today, we have a special episode where we'll be diving into the world of sound baths. If you've ever wondered what it's like to immerse yourself in soothing sound, well, you're in for a treat. Episode two continues Shell's journey as she experiences her second of six consecutive sound baths in six weeks. In this episode, Shell shares her evolving thoughts on wellness practices and provides a detailed account of her experiences both before and after her second sound bath. Let's see how this next step impacts her journey and what new insights she gains along the way. Hey Shell, so <laughs> we are back for your second sound bath um, and this is pre-second sound bath. How did you feel this week? Did you have any epiphanies or any changes since the first sound bath? Good question, Matt. The answer is yes. Great. What were those? In general, I felt more relaxed. I felt much more ease, not so much in my body, but definitely in my thinking. One thing stood out to me And that was new thoughts. I just need to explain that more to you. I'm trying to make breakthroughs in my life. I'm trying to improve myself and do things differently. But I have a certain way of thinking that goes around in its own way all the time without any new thoughts coming in. And you need new thoughts to do new things, right? But I don't have the new thoughts. So Mm -hmm. if I liken my mind to a library with lots of information, so let's say I had a library, if I was fortunate enough to have a library in my house, yeah, and I'm convinced that the, the knowledge is in one of these books in the library that I already own, and I'm a great researcher, and I've gone through most of these books, and I'm looking for a revelation. I'm looking for a new idea. I'm looking for the new way of doing things. I'm sure that if I just keep going around in this same room with all this information in it, Mm. there's just got to be something. Yes. Nothing. Okay. But this week after the sound bath, and I am kind of attributing it to the sound bath. Yes. I don't know if it was, but I'd like to think it was. Okay, that's good. (laughs) It was as... If someone opened the window at the top of the room and let in a gentle breeze with information on it yeah, and it was new information, it was the sorts mm. of thoughts that were not usually in my mind room. Yeah. And it just felt like liberation. Great. Yeah, great. So it felt like a very, it felt like a, a breakthrough, but in a very gentle way. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's good. Gentle is good. Yeah. I found that in my own journey that to uh, have breakthroughs, better for them to be gentle. Yes, please. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, yeah if, it's, if it's too dramatic, you have a tendency to lose, um, you become a little, a little ungrounded. Mm, you lose your footing. Yeah. You can lose your confidence as well. Yes. And your ego would take a battering as well, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can end up losing yourself. Um, So think of it a little bit like if you, say, took something, um, say, a chemical that changed your consciousness and you literally forgot who you were, then everything about you would change. So I'll give you an example. Um, so if you were to take, if you were to have electric shock treatment, it's very full on, but if you were to have that, 
then your memory would be completely dissolved. Yep. And then, so you wouldn't remember who you are. You wouldn't remember anything. Like nothing. And then slowly, slowly, slowly over time, memories come back. Right? But if you completely forgot who you were, then everything would fly out the window. Yeah? All your desires, all your sense of responsibility, all that your sense of who you are would be dissolved. And that could be fine for a small amount of time, but to have that go on and on and on, the, th the simple things that would happen is that you'd find it very hard to do the very basic things. You know, feed yourself, wash yourself, remember to go to bed at a certain time. Yeah, and that could be okay for a small amount of time, but for it to be ongoing, it gets very difficult. Because, you know, most of the world don't behave like that. Most, most of the world have a routine and they have expectations. And if you're living with someone and you're not doing what is normally in their routine, a part of their routine, they may become frustrated. So, um, yeah. So I think letting go of these things in a gentle way, in a slow, gentle way, is a lot healthier. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in the electricity, though. Yes. The, the bowls did seem to generate a current yep. of some description. Is it mm. electrical? Yes. Well, I mean, it's all vibration, right? So it's, it's, it's going to be... Is there a way of quantifying it of do we have machinery, for example, that can mm. tell us what it is and what hertz it is, what frequency it is? Do you have stuff like that? Yeah, definitely you can measure the frequency. Really? Yes, Ooh, absolutely. Can we do that? Yes. Um, well, we can very easily do that by just using a, um, even just a piano and measuring the pitch against that. Really? Um, yeah, we can also do that on a telephone um, with a, yeah, just an, a simple tuner. So music tuner. Okay, so, but that's a pitch. That's pitch. Yeah, yes. yeah. Would it tell us the frequency? Yeah, definitely tell us the frequency. Okay. Yeah. Can we do that? Yes, we can absolutely do that. Well, that would be really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, did you have any other questions or any other? I'm sure I'm going to have lots of questions once we've done the sound bath, uh, yeah. but not for now, yeah. Okay. Just ready to go. Great. Would you like to go and have a sound bath? Yay. Okay. Yeah, please. Well, let's go do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's a glimpse of the typical setup I use during a sound bath. The participant lies comfortably among seven Tibetan singing bowls. On the left side are bowls linked to the throat and third eye chakras, while on the right are larger bowls associated with the root, sacral and solar plexus chakras. A small bowl near the head corresponds to the crown chakra and the heart chakra bowl is placed between the ankles. Above the participant's head is a gong with tuning forks and a wind chime also used at the beginning and end of the session. For added comfort, a participant lies on three yoga mats and a sleeping bag covered with a heavy blanket to stay warm. Okay, so Shell, this is after your second sound bath. Mm -hmm. I know you're looking really blissed out. Don't make me talk. <laughs> so now that you've had the second one, what's different? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so mean to make me talk. <laughs> My brain on. Mm. It's like trying to 
it's a almost mechanical process. Yeah. To get the body to function again mm. when I'm up here just floating. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So mean to make me talk. <laughs> Oh. It's maybe a very short-lived podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just watch the clients just bliss out and unable to speak. <laughs> What's different? I'm not sure how to answer that question, but I can. I can express that there's a very, very deep feeling of relaxation. Mm. It feels that it's penetrated much more than the last session. Yeah. Again, the breathing, mm. much deeper. Yeah. I'm certainly more relaxed coming into this session, knowing what to expect. Yeah. Less trepidatious, more excited. Mm-hmm. I don't know that anything is significantly different. I think yeah. this might be a delayed response thing. In a couple of days I might be able to tell you that I've perceived a difference just right now. Session two compared to session one, much deeper level of relaxation, mm. calibration, yeah. centeredness. Less ability to speak. <laughs> uh, can I ask a question? Go for it, yes. Mm. So I'm interested to know, I, I have my eyes shut for most of the time. Yes. But every once in a while I check out what you're doing. Yeah. And I noticed how you're taking a walk around the room, around the bowls, around... Yeah. Is there a method to your madness, so to speak? Is there a sequence that you're following? Is there a reason why you're vibrating different bowls at different times? Is it clockwise, anti-clockwise? And mm. Yeah, over to you. Yeah. What's going on? What were you doing? Yeah, so there's a definite sequence. And think of the sequence like a song, you know. Yeah. So a song is just built up of patterns. Yeah. Yeah. So a way to think of it is that um, we're building up certain notes on the bowls that interact in a way that calms down your thought. Yeah. So you might think of it a little bit like if you're going to listen to um, repetitive music, like repetitive dance music, you you, be, you get into a trance-like state. And, um, and so your thinking becomes trained, yeah? So it's following a pattern. So you may begin to recognize, ah, oh, yeah, I, I can hear a pattern. It's, you know, top, bottom, right, left. Top, bottom, right, left. And then you get used to that, and then you're expecting it, and then I change it a little bit. Yeah. And so then you're like, oh, hang on, something's changed. And then we start the sequence again. Top, bottom, right, left, top, bottom, right, left. And then after a little bit of that, you're getting used to that, and then we change it again. So each time we're introducing a change, you're letting go. Yeah? Because that's what we naturally do. We go, ah, oh, yeah, okay, I know what's going on. I can predict. And then, oh, I don't know what's going on. And so you let go. Yeah? And so each time you let go, you're going deeper. Yeah, going deeper. And then it starts again. Yeah, top, bottom, right, left, top, bottom, right, left. But as that next sequence comes in, because you've let go, you're going deeper again. When you say top, bottom, you mean top of the head, toes, left, right. Correct. Literally with the bowls. Yes, oh. absolutely. 
and these bowls are always put in the same position and they they have to do with certain energy centers of the body and think of it just like this um, when you listen to low sounds you'll you'll feel it more around your belly yeah and when you hear a high sound you'll feel it more around your head mm, yeah, I definitely yeah. did yeah yeah and so um, then think of it a little bit like if you've got a sore tummy, what do you not naturally do? You rub your tummy. Yeah? And then when you've got a sore head, what do you do? You naturally you rub your head. Yeah? So you could kind of think of it a little bit like, oh, I'm a little bit sore, so I'm rubbing my head, then my toes, then my right side and my left side. When you change from this sequence yep. dramatically by using a different instrument, yep. particularly the tuning forks, which are a, a real departure from yeah. the vibration of the bowls, yep. they're so high pitch in a pretty way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that to enforce that change? That's not a good word to use, but to break that pattern that you talked about that entrainment to make a change happen is yeah. that what it's designed to do yeah yeah and why why do you well, want a change and what is it that's changing in me when you do that yeah you might think um if you're having a meal and uh you're eating a lot of potatoes right it's going to get really heavy after a while and then you might need something light to counterbalance that. Is yeah. it kind of like a cleansing of the palate when you go from one food to another and you need something that there are palate cleansing types of liquids and yeah. Yeah. So the tuning forks could be sort of that way. Yeah. And, and then another yeah. way to kind of think of it, it's a bit like, um, not that I've ever had smelling salts, but if ah. you get really drowsy, yeah, smell the smelling salts instantly oh okay i'm back yeah i might need some of those now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm still in the entrainment yeah 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 um another way to think of the tuning forks is um if we imagine that the big bowls are like big brooms getting rid of muck yeah it's just a metaphor you don't, you don't have to literally think of it like that but if you're cleaning up something you would use a big broom so the bowls you can imagine would be like a big broom what about the gong ah uh, yeah the gong well that's a that's that's a massive broom yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a vacuum i can feel it yeah yeah that's a wave of energy but you control it really well great mm. great excellent yeah you yeah. definitely want to control those 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 I'm big ones. So glad that you do. Yeah, yeah, because they can really blow you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was interesting while you were using the gong. I did think about sound waves and yeah. about sonic boom and about how sonic boom can blow people's ears out. Yeah, it yeah. can do damage. It is a force of energy. Yeah, that has physical force. Yes, absolutely. That can do damage. So. So glad you control that gong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, all the sound healing tools we're, we're using, none of them, none of them are strong enough to do damage. It's not like um, where you would get your kidney stones removed with lithotripsy, um, which you understand about that directing sound at a kidney stone to break it, break it up. I didn't know that was a thing, but I know now. Yeah, yeah. So um, we do that. And um, and if you look at an opera singer who can smash a glass by singing yeah. a note. Yeah. Yeah. So you just need to find the resonance of the glass and then sing it loud enough until it lets go. And then it will crack. Until it lets go. Yeah. Let's go of what? Well, it's holding its structure together. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm holding my <laughs> structure together. Yeah. Ah. Oh, so you. So. So if you think. But you'd have. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no, no, you. go. 
you talked about going through a process, a pattern. Yeah. That entrains me. Mm. And then you change that sequence to yes. break that pattern. Yeah. Is there something then I'm letting go of before the next sequence starts, like the glass that lets go of its structure? Yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. I had an interest, well, I thought it was an interesting thought. Mm, mm. For the first one, I have some habits and I think they're yeah. good habits yeah. because I love improvement, which is why I'm here. I love improvement. So I've had lots of meditative, meditative or prayer practices or affirmation mm. practices based on the belief from people who know better than me mm. that your thoughts can change your life. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So good thoughts can change everything. Absolutely. What what you think changes what you do, what you eat, who you're with, what work you do, who mm. you hang around, your environment, so on and so forth, theoretically. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 So... In my experience, it does work, but Mm. there are points at which I get stuck. Yes. And this methodology, it finds a natural barrier. Mm. And then my thoughts, no matter how how regular my practice is, it's kind of just not going anywhere. It's not... Mm. So the thought was, the mm. thought was, in terms of the sound bathing, mm-hmm. what if, what if the inverse mm. is possible? Mm. If you cha- if your thoughts can change your vibration, yes. What if that stops working and you change the vibration changes your thoughts? Yes. Yeah. So, in this practice of sound bathing, mm. I'm no longer thinking at at some point the thoughts just go I'm too relaxed here I'm not going to bother yes so I I get into almost sleep state yeah and I'm not really thinking anymore but the vibration based on what you're telling me about this changing of sequences yeah is changing my vibration so theoretically Mm. would that assist me in changing the vibration would that assist me in changing my thoughts to Improved thoughts. Yes. Yeah. So you're hundred percent sure about this? Well yeah, you want to know how that works. Tell me how this <laughs> works, man. I want to know how it works. <laughs> okay. So everything about you or who you think you are is just habit. Yep. You're just a big mound of habit. Yep. Some of them are good habits I might add. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. So, habit, um, you, don't, you don't need to worry about whether it's a good habit or a bad habit. What you want to do is you want to become aware that you have habits. Yeah. If you are not aware that you have habits, then you will think that everything is always constantly your reaction to things is always new. But it's not. It's just built on habits. Yeah. So when you come in and um, say you look at a piece of fruit that you don't like, it's not the fruit's fault that you don't like it. It's just the habit that you've built into looking at that piece of fruit and going, yeah, I don't like this fruit. So, but that can be 100% changed, yeah? Mm. You can change mm. yourself out of that habit, yeah. And um, a simple way of looking at a piece of fruit that you don't like is you say, well, in the past, every time I've tried this variety of fruit, I haven't enjoyed it, but I haven't tried this one. And this one may be different, And also there's a whole lot of different ways you could have the fruit. You could eat it raw. You could eat it cooked. You could puree it. Yeah. You could put it in something. You could disguise it. There are so many different ways that you could have it. Eventually you could 100% find a way 
to disguise the fruit so much that you would be, oh yeah, this is totally fine. And then you just work your way backwards from that and then you get used to the next level, yeah? And so then eventually you can change the habit to, I actually do like this fruit. Mm -hmm. Maybe once upon a time I didn't like the fruit, but now I actually do like the fruit. Mm -hmm. So, Are we liking the fruit or are we liking the thought? Ah, uh, yeah, it's definitely all the thought. It's all the thought. Do we kind of get addicted to a thought pattern that tells us, I don't like this fruit, even yeah. though we may not have evidence anymore that we, we don't like it? Yeah. But we're addicted, well, addicted is maybe too strong a word, but yeah. definitely in a loop of thinking. Yeah, what you're addicted to is actually the enjoyment of being right. Ah, oh, ha-ha, ha-ha, yeah. ego. Yeah, just ego, <laughs> yeah. We love being right. Yeah. In fact, we'll, we'll yeah. destroy ourselves and other people just to be right. And that's what, we, that's what we do. Now, if you're not aware of that, which is the whole purpose of doing sound baths and these types of practices, is that you actually want to become aware of your habits. Mm -hmm. So if you're aware of your habits, mm -hmm. you then have mm -hmm. choice to change. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of habits, you're well, stuck. You're stuck and that makes me think about free will. Yeah, the no free do, will. Do we have free – well, we don't have free will if we um, don't have awareness yes. that we're stuck. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Okay, so the sound bath – the frequencies that you build up are mm. helping to step me out of certain patterns, whatever patterns they are, thinking patterns or, Correct. I don't know, maybe, maybe this works on the body as well? Yes. Yeah, it works on yeah, the body. Well, it works on the body as well. Well, see, the oh. mind is attached to the body. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't, mm. you know, change one without the other one, you yeah, know, yeah. feeling the repercussions. Yeah. So... So... So a way to think of it is that you were, you were born and you've been building these habits ever since you were a baby. And we would like to think that um, we now have adult habits, but you still need to remember that they're built on baby habits. Programming. Programming. Yeah. Yeah. So if something happened to you when you were really little, you may hang on to that. Because you think, ah, oh, if that happens again, I'll be very unhappy. Yeah? But you need to remember that that thing that happened to you happened to you when you were in a very vulnerable state. And now that you're an adult, you're not as vulnerable. It's circumstance spe specific. So without those same set of, same environment, the outcome could be different. But if we're stuck in it, yeah, the habit got it we'll keep playing out yeah yeah but going back to the physical stuff yes yeah so yeah. i am already experiencing after one week yeah that new thoughts are able to there's a novelty of my thoughts which yes. feels like a breakthrough yes yeah so i kind of expected that that didn't surprise me yeah. but you're talking also about these habits and patterns that take place in the body yeah would sound bathing theoretically help with digestion would it help with dietary habits would it help with other bodily functions if i had a heart condition for example mm. i know we're straying sure. way out into medical yeah. stuff here and there's there's no machinery here to yeah. test any of this yeah would it entrain my digestive system or my heart in a different way? Yeah. Okay, so... You sound very sure of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. Well, a way to think of it is that digestion has to do with your eating habits, right? So if you're in a state of fear, you'll naturally do one of two things. You'll either overeat to build up protection, yeah, the bigger you are, the, the less that can hurt you. It's a pretty obvious way to think of it. 
or you will under eat because you won't feel hungry. Yeah, you'll feel so nervous that you can't keep anything down. So you'll simply become unbalanced in your eating habits. If you become uh, unbalanced in your eating habits, then of course you're going to have digestion issues. Yep. So what we're looking to do is to decrease your perception of fear. Well, no, to decrease the fear, increase your awareness that you have habits about fear. Oh, ha ha. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So So that's almost that could be almost imperceptible because if these fear which is a mind thing, yeah. right? Has stopped the thinking about being afraid of something, whether I'm afraid of that fruit because last time I ate it when I was a baby, it was rotten and it tasted really terrible, you know, yes. mild sort of level fear. Yeah. If it's, I'm not expressing this very well, that fear could have just, that awareness of that fear must be so past, so buried. Yes. So buried that it just forms a physical manifestation. Mm. It must take quite a bit to become aware of something that's gone so deep for so long. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I've got another question okay, now. Okay, go for it. That's good. That's good. How do you know? How mm. does the client know? How will I know? Mm that I've become aware of the habit mm. and the fear around a bad habit. Yeah. How will I know? Yeah. For example, I knew in the week that's just passed because mm. I, I described being in a library in my mind, having a lot of resources mm. within there, having gathered a lot of information over a lifetime, being a good researcher, yeah. but still feeling stuck and yes. still feeling that oh, there's got to be information in here somewhere. I'm an intelligent human being somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can, I can nut this one out. Yeah. But when I felt the window open and a breeze come in with a novel thought, I realised mm. my habit of moving around this library researching yeah. was, it wasn't a negative habit, yep. but it was a habit that's now stalled me yeah. from moving forward or moving beyond yeah. or having even a novel thought. Yeah. How other, it, and I had I guess a presence of mind to know that that was a shift. Mm. How, what other ways would I know that there's been a habit and that I've become aware of it and what's beneath that habit? Yeah. What, what do other people say they perceive so that they can mm. become aware of this shift? Yeah. Um, I would say... That was not very well articulated, but I think you get the gist. Yeah, I get yeah, the gist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so if you look at fear, for example, um, what happens with fear is that a fearful thought will enter your mind. Um, let's say, um, I think there's something under the bed, for example. Yeah. <laughs> common fear, you know, when you're a kid. Oh, I think there's something under the bed. And what happens is that thought will snowball. And so you will start fixating on the thought and you will start imagining more. And it's only when you actually begin to notice, oh, I'm thinking too much, and you start to some distance between yourself and the thought that you begin to realize oh no hang on this is the thought this is my imagination I'm in control of my imagination okay so if I'm in control of it I can simply just stop imagining it 
and imagine something else. Yeah. Um, for some people, they may find that the thought keeps returning. But what you need to do at that stage is continue to look at it as, ah, this is a thought. This is my imagination. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm asking is how do you get to that awareness point? Yeah. How do you and how, do that so how does the sound bathing help us get to that awareness point? Yes. Where we're able to identify, oh, this is a thought – rather than it's me and I'm stuck in this. Yeah. It's just a thought, separate myself. How, how does the sound bathing help yep. me get to that awareness? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then think of the fearful, fearful thought being close to you, yeah? So when you have a fearful thought, it doesn't even seem like you're having a thought. It just seems like there is something dangerous and you need to get out of there yep but if nothing happens in the next minute two minutes three minutes four minutes whatever you'll start to go okay i think there's something else at play here and then you will begin to put some distance between you and the thought yeah uh-huh so when you're having a sound bath thoughts may arise but you will be so blissful that it's very easy to push the thought away. Mm, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And so there's that natural distance. Yeah. Is it the sound or is it the vibration that's creating that distance? Well, essentially um, you're becoming more focused on the experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's such a... It's it's such a lovely experience, like yeah. like you're having a bath, like yeah. a warm bath. Yeah. And it's so pleasurable that the thought becomes uninteresting. Got it. True. Yeah. Yeah. Uninteresting. Uninteresting. Yeah. So it's like if you're wearing velvet and you're just feeling the velvet, you'd be like, oh, this is so beautiful. That my mind is quiet because so, I'm so focused on the physical body rather than the fearful thought. Mm, mm. So what happens to uh, probably a lot of people is that they, a, a, as an example, they may look at their bank account and immediately they might go, oh, I don't have enough money for groceries. Yeah. And then they'll start imagining, ah, okay, so I won't be eating tonight. Yep. But there may be um, a, a bit of time between now and dinner time. And within that time, other things could possibly happen. You could think of solutions for that. But at that initial stage of, ah, bank account low, ah, no food tonight, oh, I'm going to go hungry. It's very distressing. Mm -hmm. And then you get very caught up in that, mm -hmm. and then that can snowball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so if you had a technique at that stage when that was happening where you could divert your attention to something physical and then allow that initial fearful thought to just pass by a little bit you may then have enough awareness to actually think of a better solution rather than focusing on the fact that oh I'm a bit afraid that I'm not going to be eating tonight mm -hmm. distraction. distraction you need a distraction you need a circuit breaker correct so going back to this sequence my original question were you doing a sequence and you said you you were, it was a pattern, and then you're breaking the pattern slightly to take me into another pattern. Yes. It's kind of the same thing, It's, but with the vibrational pattern of, mm. the, of the bowls. Yep. Is to break that pattern just enough 
to yep. gently move me into an, a different pattern and then into a different pattern with that distraction in between. Am I getting this yes. right? Yes. Yes. Is that what is that is that what was happening? Yes. Well, that that's a yeah. That's a, that's a very yeah. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I, I think I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. It's a really gentle process. It's very gentle. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. If you were, let's say, if you were to take um, a sedative, a very powerful sedative. That is a sedative. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm still not here. Yeah. I'm still, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is a sedative. Yeah. At times I wondered, is it just the fact that I'm having a nap essentially in the daytime in a yeah. very, very comfortable environment, Yeah. super cosy, Okay. super yeah. pretty, is it just that? But it's not. No. I know it's not just that so i'll explain that Mm because that's a really good question um when you take a nap or you take um say you go to sleep and you start dreaming Mm -hmm. your dreaming is just regurgitating your daily experience so let's say you're having um say you go into the city and say the traffic you find very irritating you might find by the time you get home you'll have a headache because there's been too much stimulation Um, or you may feel yeah agitated right when you go to sleep the agitation is still there the headache is still there sure you might be relaxing a bit deeper but your body your mind still has to process that agitation and so we'll be looking at a way of digesting it yeah however you'll probably find that when you wake up in the morning you don't feel well rested enough yeah because that information that you got yesterday is just too much too much on your system and then once you do that for a whole week (laughs) by the end of the week you're all bunged up in your mind yeah, you're essentially you're constipated with too much information. Yeah, which is going to lead the state of the world at yeah. the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Mental constipation. So, what's happening with meditation is a very effective way to to process. You might say it's like a mm. like a mental okay. laxative or a digestive aid, where you can get the information and you can digest digest it much faster, mm. and then let it go. Is sound bathing a form of meditation? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Seems to work faster than anything I've been doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, it's, mm. um, it's very powerful at giving your mind a rest. Yeah. 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 And um, if you looked at stress levels... When you're in high stress, you'd be doing a lot of thinking. So overthinking things, yeah? And when you're overthinking things, your awareness becomes very small because it's usually you have a cyclic thought around the same thing and it builds and builds and builds and builds. So you might find that you have a circuit breaker built in where you're overthinking so much and then you have a panic attack, yeah? And then that's like a little circuit breaker. That's essentially, you know, you're saying this is too much. But that's really not good for you. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't be really, you shouldn't ever be getting to that stage where you're having, you know, like an actual physical attack where you're having a breakdown, whether it's a migraine or, uh, you know, you're getting the shakes or you, you can't be amongst people anymore. Um, that's, that's way too far. You're way too far. Then what some people do is they self-medicate at that stage. They might do that with alcohol. They might do it with street drugs. They might do it with going down to the chemist and 
I don't. I never go to the chemist, so I don't know what people would take. <laughs> I think a lot of people just use their phones and they scroll. Yes, it is a way of uh, dumbing down your mind for a little while, numbing it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, looking at kitten photos, puppy photos, or not even just, yeah, just the, the scroll itself is a kind of. It has a kind of drugging effect. Yes, absolutely. A numbing effect. So you don't need a pharmaceutical. Yeah. And and that could be true with work as well. You know, keeping yeah. busy. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Distracting yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, other people do it with sport. You know, there's there's other healthier ways to, you might say, defrag. You might go and play some sport. Um which is good. The The only thing is that if uh, you become overly competitive, you might find that you're really competitive at work and then you go and play tennis with your mates and then you may find yourself getting angry that you're losing the game of tennis. <laughs> and um, at that stage, you'd probably be thinking, okay, if you're getting upset over a game, then uh, could be could be worth your while to look at something more calming. I'm definitely very calm. <laughs> <laughs> and this is only number two. Only number two. <laughs> this is the part I'm really interested in is the accumulative effect. Yeah. So I'm definitely feeling more centred than last time. Yeah. Uh, probably grounded as well, but st- still very... <laughs> yeah. In in the best possible way. Yeah. Yes. I'm lucid. Yes. I. I yeah, you look hear... lucid. You look bright. Okay. Yeah, you don't it's look sleepy. Very tranquil on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> don't know what's going on on the outside? Yeah. So I can understand you perfectly. I can respond as well. Yeah. There's no loss of uh, awareness mm. and perception or motor skills in any way. Just a very deep sense of calm yeah and reasonably centered as well uh more more centered than the last one yeah where it took a little while for me to get grounded yeah yeah Yeah. so after six sessions goodness yeah might turn into a yogi (laughs) i'm joking (laughs) yeah i think i'm out of questions matt uh, I'll I'll quickly touch on that um, after six. What you might experience is that I'll grow wings and fly away. <laughs> <laughs> There's a possibility, but <laughs> uh, what what I've experienced is that you go through these blissful states, right? Even outside of the yep. bath itself. Yep. Yeah, mm. so spontaneously. Spontaneously. Just... Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you can stay permanently blissful, which is wonderful. I think that's what most people want. Wow. And um, and so the bliss, like anything, you know, if you're feeling, if you wake up in the morning and the sun is shining and you're feeling good, you walk out in the sun, you'll feel really good. Yeah. So. Um, or, you know, if it's a rainy day, you may actually look at the rain and really appreciate the patter of the rain on the roof. You may really enjoy the, the fresh smell of the rain. So things increase. Your, your sense of enjoyment increases. Your sense of enjoyment increases. Yeah. Yeah. Like things get brighter. Things look better. Things taste better. They sm- taste they, better. They taste better. They smell better. That makes it sound like that there would be a physiological impact. Yes. Not just a psychological impact. Yeah, not just psychological. Everything gets better. Everything gets Everything better. Gets better. Everything gets better. Mm. I'm holding you to that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Make a report card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coordination gets better. True. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, coordination gets better. Yeah. Uh, your ability to time things gets better. Ability to time things. Yeah. Interesting. So you might find yourself becoming more aware of time as a calculation and get better at 
knowing when a certain amount of time has passed. Because you're more present. You're not in your mind. You're more present to what's going on around you. Mm-hmm. And then your sense of judgment. Mm. Yeah. Because you're simply more in the present moment rather than being lost in uh, imagination, like trying to predict what's coming down the line. Right. Yeah. Or being caught up in what happened yesterday and that you need justice for what happened and you're trying to figure out a scheme to get back at the person who supposedly slighted you. (laughs) Yeah. Because when you're more present... What happened yesterday becomes incredibly uninteresting. Uninteresting. There's that uninteresting again. Yeah. yeah. And then the future also can equally become as uninteresting. Really? Yeah. And the present moment mm. becomes exceedingly interesting. It's like children really, aren't they? I mean, yeah. they have no concept of the future other than, you know, Santa going to bring me Christmas presents. That's it. They're... Especially you you get kids who are like one to two and they see a butterfly for the first time and it's just magical. Or when really little babies and they see their hand for the first time, it's like, oh, oh, what is this? Yeah, yeah. Is it like that? It's a bit like that, yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah. number six, here we come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll retain or you'll get back some of that sense of innocence that you may feel of that you've Aww. lost. Yeah. Aww. yeah, yeah, still there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to tap into it. Mm. So um, the other thing that can come after these blissful states, is an increased amount of energy. Physical energy? Yeah. Really? Because you're not spending your energy on things that don't exist. Yeah. The mind does take a lot of energy, doesn't it? Yeah. it just to think requires a lot of energy yeah. from the body. So if that's quietened, yeah, that's on low gear. That's right. There would be a lot more energy yes. for the body. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So think well, of it like... I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So I'm going to enjoy life more. Yeah. I'm going to be more aware. Yeah. Everything will be more pleasurable, include, including food, and I'll have yeah. more energy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about this. Yeah. Four more to go. Yeah, four more to go. Mm. Fantastic. All right. Well, I guess we could probably close it there, yeah? Unless you have some questions for me, more uh, questions for me. Ooh. Because this is an experiment for you too. Yeah, To okay. take someone through this process yeah. all the way through. This is, this is a different kind of scenario. It's not just a one-off sound no, bath. No, that's right. With that's one right. modality, whether yeah. it be gong or the tuning forks. This mm. is... This is... Every modality with a sequence, yeah, with a continuum, yeah, yeah. You're mm. taking me through a venturi here. Mm. Yeah, I don't know anyone else who's done this in this way. Yeah, to such with such in such enhanced situation for yep. a sound bathing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you curious about with um, this process? I guess I'm kind of a, a little bit curious about do you notice a shift and at what stage during the sound bath are you noticing a shift? Can you tell me a bit more about what kind of shift you're talking about? Well, when I meditate, I know when it's actually at the end of the meditation because my spine will become a little bit straighter uh-huh. and my mind will become a little bit clearer. And it's almost like just at that point someone's flicked a switch and immediately I'm in deep sleep or uh-huh. deep meditative. Uh-huh. And But leading up to that point, it can almost be like I'm constantly fighting with my mind to quieten down. Like I'll get caught up on things. Like I'll think of something happened yesterday and... 
and I'll start going around in a little circle and then I'll become aware of it and then I'll go, come on, just sit up straight and keep breathing and go back to the mantra. And, and I'll, I'll be doing this over and over and sometimes that will last almost the entire session and then just right at the last moment there'll be that little switch mm. and I'll be in deep meditation. Um, so I wonder if you ex- have been experiencing that or are you aware of that? Or no, not at this moment. Okay, so I'm. I can't say I've experienced what you're talking about, which is the mind just completely switching off and being aware of a moment of almost black and white difference. Yeah. But what I have noticed, particularly in this session, is that at certain points, I'll do that. Yes. You may have noticed yes, me I doing have it. Yes, I that, yes. That all of a sudden, spontaneously, I'll be taking a really big breath yes. and then there's this shedding. Yeah. A letting go. Got it, yeah. Because I'm concentrating or aware or just enjoying that yeah. experience, I'm not aware of exactly where you are in your sequence. Yes. I don't know which bowl's ringing at that particular time. Yeah. But I noticed that it probably was a good 15 minutes into the whole session before I took my first deep breath. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. From that point onwards, I think I took about five of those really deep breaths. So I'm wondering if those married up with your Mm. sequence changing that we talked about. Mm, Yeah. So you talked about that patterning where you take me through a training and then change it slightly to take me into another training, which is that distraction that we were talking about, right? Yeah. But it's a a sound distraction. Yep. And then you're taking me into a different pattern with a different vibration. Well, I'm pretty sure I took about five big deep breaths. I yeah. didn't perceive exactly when. I mm. just knew that I did. Yes. And I knew that there was a shedding. I knew there was a letting go. Yeah. And there was a softening yeah. and a deepening of my relaxation. Yes. I wasn't really thinking about whether my mind is chattering Mm. That to me was irrelevant. I knew it was all going to be nonsense anyway. Yeah. I wasn't giving it much attention. I knew it would eventually give up. Yes. And I'd kind of go to sleep. Yeah. But I was interested in what my body was doing, whether yeah. it was going into, if it was just giving up. Yeah. If it was giving up its tension. And with each of those. <sighs> Mm. Breath, it did. Yep. It did. It would be interesting to know yeah. if you, if they connected with the, those deliberate sequence changes. Mm. Did yeah. you notice it or do we, we'll get into session three and have a look? I reckon we'll get into session three and have a look. However, what I noticed from having taught a lot of people music over the years Mm. is that when they're starting to play a mistake. Play a mistake. Yeah. So they may have a line that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And then a little mistake will occur. Yeah. It's very jarring. I do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Almost completely puts me off and I just want to like, okay, I I cannot play this instrument anymore. Yeah. Giving up, never going to another lesson. (laughs) (laughs) And so what happens is that behavior then occurs again what behavior of making the same mistake oh because you're kind of entrenching the mistake correct and usually what happens is that people are only aware that they've made a mistake once they've made the mistake a couple of times oh no i can hear it when something's out of tune i get that one straight away yeah so once so if, if you're not aware and only after a little while that you become aware oh, I've been playing the, the wrong note, well, now you have a habit of playing that wrong note and you now need to create a new habit. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So 
the way I liken it is that when you're creating habits, think of it like drawing a line in the sand, right? When you draw a line in the sand and you pass some water down the line, the water will cut the line deeper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like what happens in the brain with synapses and habit forming, right? Yes. But how does this relate back to the deep breaths that I take at certain points? Yeah. What I'm imagining is that maybe on the first sound bath you found those release points Uh and you released. And this, this second one you might be releasing at the same point. We'd have to film it to know, really, wouldn't we? Yeah, we'd have to document it. We'd have to document it. Yeah. But that's a possibility. Um, You would actually find that from having watched a lot of movies that you would naturally know the sequence of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So with the sequence that you use that Mm. may or may not be marrying up with the letting go breath. Yeah. Unless we film it and yeah. we find out. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what it is that's – is it the vibration? Is it certain tones? If it's certain tones, are those certain tones universally appealing and therapeutic to people to get to that point that I got to Mm. where I'm letting go of the breath Mm. and deepening my relaxation? Or are those tones specific to me? Are they Mm. ones that I like, ones that I, for whatever reason, have connected with safety perhaps that I can let go and relax now? I mean, I guess I, it's a rhetorical question. I yeah. don't know that there's any way to answer that. Well, it'd be a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Um, if you would, you would definitely see, um, like if you were trying to make a distinction between giving a dog a sound bath and a human a sound bath, you might find that maybe all humans have a similarity uh-huh. and maybe all dogs have a similarity. But then within, you know, from human to human, there would be little slight differences. And from dog to dog, there'd be slight differences. But the difference between dog and human might be great because we're looking at a different species of animal. Um, and maybe that might even be greater if you, if you gave a fish a sound bath because <laughs> uh, maybe they're quite, quite different to humans. Well, they're always in a vibrational state because water is really receptive to yes. sound waves, isn't it? Yes, and Dolphins absolutely. and whales, they communicate through sound waves. So Correct. I, it's not that much of a stretch for the fish. No, no that's yeah. right. It's not maybe yeah. not quite so absurd. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, so I think you would probably find that there would be some unique moments for you um, but you might also find that you know um, you might find that maybe all females have some similar moments because of their biology and males may have similar moments because Mm. of their biology Mm. and um, what I'm thinking is that because we're playing a sequence that's the bowls are near certain body parts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're giving your head a rub, then we're giving your toes a rub, then we're giving your left side a rub, and then we're giving your right yeah. side a rub. Yeah. And so after a certain amount of rubbing, you'd probably go, ah, oh, okay, I can relax. But you might find that depending on your habits, that maybe your left side, you're holding a little bit more tense depending on maybe an injury you had Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or a a moment you had, you know, Mm. in the past. And so Mm. you might be finding that you're protecting your left side more than your right side. 
Yeah. Can you pick that up with the bowls? Is there a feedback? Is there feedback through the bowls to that kind of thing? I know yeah, there I is. know going back to the tuning forks before yeah. we started this sequence. Yeah. With the tuning forks you were able to pick up some old hurt. I can't yeah. remember if it was physical or psychological, but it was a it was an old hurt yeah. that had somehow got into the I don't know what this is, this aura, vibration, whatever it is. Yep. And yep. it could be picked up through the forks and freaky thing was you were accurate yeah it was something very specific to like actually it was generalized in terms of how you expressed it yeah but you picked up the age it happened which was 28 yeah or around about that time mm. I thought oh God, yeah yeah that's yeah. that's right yeah. how freaky that the mm. forks could pick up a vibration from something that's from a particular age so yeah. I'm wondering when you do that bowls sequence, if let's say I had an injury, my left elbow, yeah, that if let's say I'm holding on to that and not letting go of that, yes, can you feel that as a feedback, as feedback through the bowls? Because I watched mm. you at one point, I, mm. I just thought, oh, I'm not going to sleep through this. I want to, I want to see what's going on. So yeah. I opened my eyes a few times to have a look at what you were doing. Mm. And I remember. At one point, you were at, over at the right hand bowl. Yes. Doing this. Yeah, making it sing. Making yeah. it sing. Yeah, it's a very deliberate movement. Yes. That surprised me. Yeah. It was not random. Yeah. And for some reason, it just made me think of cooking. <laughs> yeah. You can really throw things in together and just throw the throw the wooden spoon in and give it a bit of a stir and walk away and let it bubble. Yeah. But when you really want something to cook a certain way, yep. you watch it yep. and you keep stirring and you keep adding just enough yeah. to yeah, yep. to spice it up the right way. And I could see you with that mm. same precision yep. bringing yeah. the bowl up to a certain temperature, vibration, yeah. yeah, very, very deliberate way of tuning up that bowl. Yep. But can you feel back in the bowl something coming off yeah. me? Yeah. A a a and be kind. I, yeah, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't need everybody to know <laughs> my inner secrets. So uh, yeah, yeah. Might, um, might be something for offline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the only thing that I could probably tell you that would probably make a bit of sense is um, the the bowls are always they're always the same bowls that I'm using. The bowls are not changing, except maybe very, 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 very slightly over a long period of time decaying, <laughs> as we all do, right? But most of the time, the bowls are always the same. And I'm not hitting them hard, so they're not getting dented or anything like that. It's very gentle playing the bowls. But occasionally when you listen to the bowls, um, depending on who you're working with, um, the, the, the sound of the bowl changes. Hmm. And um, sometimes they don't sing very well. Can you perceive why that is? Um, and and can you change, you know how I asked about changing your thoughts can change your energy or your vibration mm. in your life. And I've asked, well, I'm experimenting with this, can it work conversely? Mm. If you change the vibration through the singing bowls, through the sound bathing can mm. it also change your thoughts so mm, you mm. don't have to work so damn hard to yes. change your thoughts you, you, you've got this mechanical process that can assist you to yeah. br make that breakthrough so in that same vein yeah if you perceive that one of the bowls is giving you feedback about something that's out of tune yeah can you bring that part of that person I'm going back to the left yes. elbow. Yes. 
back into tune. Yeah. You can? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How? How do you do that? <laughs> well, think of it like training a puppy. Yeah. So if you want a puppy to not poo and wee on your bed, then you just simply need to train it that you go to the bathroom in a designated space, right? It doesn't mean that you hit the puppy every time it does something on your bed. You'll simply lovingly pick the puppy up, take it to the place where you want it to do its business. Yeah. And then when you find it doing its business in that spot, you reward it. Yeah. If you You scold- can do this with a singing bowl. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you can how do does it. that work? You can, do, you can do it with your mind. Yeah. And the singing bowl. So you might find that when you've got a sore area on your body, yeah, if you rub it, depending on how you rub it and with how much force, it will either soothe it or agitate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the bowls are all about soothing the area. Uh huh. So okay. you're trying to get the muscles to let go as you would in a massage. Yeah. Okay, I found it not. We're trying to let that part of your body relax. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. That makes so, sense to me. Yeah. All right. So you can pick up on certain parts of the body that seem tense. And you could you could maybe think of it a little bit like if you wanted to. And I don't know how scientifically correct this is, but as a dolphin would use sonar to detect land, you would use the bowl in a similar way to detect where there is something that seems a little bit unbalanced. And you can hear this. And you can hear it. You yeah. can hear something being out of tune. Yeah, when, <sighs> yeah, when, uh, when things are really wrong, the bowls sound quite ugly. Wow. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I know it seems pretty weird, but, you know, dolphins use sonar to avoid, well, I guess, rocks and whatnot. And, um, and you know, I haven't really thought about it. Maybe the bowl is detecting some muscle tension. I don't even think about it as detecting. It's more, it's giving a voice to something that's imperceivable and doesn't have a voice of its own. Maybe. And it's maybe just, yeah, it's found, let's say, elbow. It's yeah. found a way of actually expressing, hey, I'm, I'm not feeling okay. Yeah. I'm going to make a bad sound through this bowl. Mm. Could it be something like that? Maybe. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah, my expertise with this is not in the mm, physical science. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more of a um, experience, you know, my, my knowledge comes more from experience. So if I see something working, I will keep doing it to see if it continues to work. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, then I'll go in another direction. And Very um, sensible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why go where it's not working? Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Experience, experiential results. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, you have a very calm client here. Yeah. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's working. It looks like we're heading in the right we're direction. We're going in the right direction. Yeah. Just keep going in that direction. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, it would be very interesting, I think, to measure things. Because, I mean, I do do that. I do measure things, you know. Um, and, um, but yeah, it, it is interesting to measure certain frequencies and things like that. Can we do that? Um, we probably can. I think I, I think I'd need to put a bit of thought into how we, how we would do that. You certainly have a lot of equipment in this yeah. room that surely <laughs> some of it's useful for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing we would probably have to think about is, how could that information be used usefully? Yeah, how can it be helpful? Yeah, mm. rather than just, you curiosity. know, curiosity mm -hmm. or more information that doesn't maybe serve a purpose other than to say, oh, yes, we 
we have some fancy numbers and we can <laughs> we can throw them around like we're we know something that other people don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I hope that answers yeah. your question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Yeah. Looking forward to chai. Do I get chai today? Yeah, we will go and have a chai hey, now. Hey, future clients, you get chai as well. <laughs> <laughs> You get chai. It's really good. Fantastic. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, still in bliss land. Yeah, thank that's you. good. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, look forward to seeing you again next week for number, number three. three. Excellent. Thanks, Shell. Join us again next week as Shell continues her journey with her third of six consecutive sound baths. Thanks for watching today. This has been a fascinating exploration of sound baths. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Until next time, stay well and keep exploring new experiences.